What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's going on here in our country on a daily basis, like making money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and stimulus check update. I want to wish each and every one of you a happy Mother's Day, and hopefully you're spending it with family, if not with our family here on YouTube, our extended family. So happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. And let me know if you're doing anything special here for Mother's Day with uh, friends or family or anything like that. So um, yeah, we had uh, my son Julian was on in the end of last video at 3 p.m. You can check that out after this video. I'll link you to the uh, to that video here at the end of this video. But yeah, I want to wish each and every one of you guys a happy Mother's Day, um, especially the mothers. And uh, hopefully you're uh, enjoying Mother's Day. It's a beautiful day out here today in Ohio. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. The First Lady of the United States, Jill Biden, is actually in Ukraine with a surprise announcement. Uh, yeah, that's right. You can see the headline here. Jill Biden pays a surprise visit to Ukraine to meet their first lady. That's right. Uh, you can see a picture of um, both of them there here, which is very surprising. I mean, uh, you know, obviously Ukraine is under attack here. And uh, Russia's quote, Victory Day is tomorrow. Their Victory Day is, is uh, you know, an homage to World War II. That's where they, it's kind of like our July 4th day. Their Victory Day is, is from World War II. But they're expected to have some type of major announcement here tomorrow. So it's a very dangerous time to be in Ukraine, especially for you know, the first lady of the United States. But nonetheless, she's there. Uh, here's here's what's going on. First lady Jill Biden made an unannounced visit to Western Ukraine on Sunday, holding a surprise Mother's Day meeting with the first lady, Olena Zelensky, to show U.S. support for the embattled nation as Russia presses in the punishing war in the eastern region. Biden, Jill Biden traveled under the cloak of secrecy, becoming the latest high-profile American to enter Ukraine during its 10-week-old conflict with Russia. Yeah, it's almost three months old here at this point. Quote, I wanted to come on Mother's Day, the U.S. First Lady told the First Lady of Ukraine. I thought it was important to show the Ukrainian people that this war has to stop and this war has been brutal and that the people of the United States stand with the people of Ukraine. Uh, Jill Biden spent about two hours in Ukraine traveling by vehicle to the town of Yurzohorod. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that 10 times fast. About a 10-minute drive from a Slovakian, from a Slovakian border village, where she had toured a border processing facility. Zelenska thanked Biden for her, quote, courageous act and said, we understand what it takes for the U.S. First Lady to come here during a war when military actions are taking place every day, when the air sirens are happening every day even today. The first, the two first ladies came together in a small classroom, sitting across a table from one another and greeting each other in front of reporters before they met in private. Zelenska and her children have been at an undisclosed location for their safety. Yeah, that's very sad. And don't forget that the Ukrainian president has said that both he and his family have been uh, public enemy number one um, from Russia, that uh, including his family have been hunted by Putin and the Russian army, which is just so sad. Yeah, unbelievable what uh, what is going on in Ukraine. 
and uh, we know what has happened to uh, civilians and, and everything there. So, uh, you know, as always, my, my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody, you know, and, and what's going on in that country. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Regarding women's rights here on Mother's Day, according to a new poll, almost two in three say that the Supreme Court should uphold the Roe versus Wade uh, law here. Here is the current uh, polling uh, results here. Check this out. Nearly two out of three Americans questioned in a new poll said that the Supreme Court should uphold the landmark Roe versus Wade decision that uh, legalized abortion in the U.S. and has been uh, there for about 50 years or so. The survey published Sunday today found that 64% of respondents said the nation's highest court, the Supreme Court, should keep the decision the way it is, while 36% disagreed. Uh, that comes to uh, 90 that comes to 100% actually. So, uh, yeah, so there wasn't any people that said, um, you know, they weren't sure or anything along those lines. 84% of those who want Roe upheld said that overturning it would move the country in the wrong direction. And 82% said reversing it would be dangerous to women and for Americans' rights. In contrast, 85% of those who want this, the, the decision overturned, this is where we get you know dip people's different opinions, right? And you know it's perfectly okay for everybody to have different opinions, said that reversing it would protect the unborn. And, and I totally get both sides of the coin there, right? While 80% said that it would move the country in the right direction. And 64% said it would protect women. 76% of Democrats surveyed oppose a federal law making it illegal, pollsters found. While Republicans are more divided, 48% of Republicans responders said they would support a federal law making it illegal. Well, 52% are opposed. That's interesting because if you look at that, uh, Republicans are almost 50-50, 48-52. Very interesting there. Literally almost right down the line, 48-52 is about as, <laughs> about as close to 50-50 as you can get. Very interesting there. Very interesting there. 94% of respondents who said that it should be legal in their states pointed to protections for victims of rape and incest. And 89% highlighted protections for women with high risk pregnancies. And, uh, you know, my wife talked about that. I had her on the show a, a few days ago and, and we talked about both of these. And, um, yeah, the, the, that's the problem here is that the states that want to outlaw this if Roe versus Wade is overturned would potentially, it really depends on each state and, and how the law would be written in each state, um, they, they may just flat out ban it. And, and that's that's the, the problem. We'll have to see what goes down. I'll, I'll keep you up to date here. Um, everybody has a different opinion on this, and, and I've read through the comments a lot of, lot of good opinions on this, and I, I really uh, respect everybody's opinions. You know, um, I, I went to Sunday school, you know, growing up uh, every week. You know, I'm a Christian, and uh, I totally get that, uh, um, you know, argument. I totally get the argument that the government should not tell a woman what to do. I, I, I really strongly agree with that one. I mean, who wants the government to tell a woman what to do and, and wants to have the government force a woman to have a baby? Uh, I, I don't think the government should be forcing anybody to, to do anything like that. I mean, that's uh, that doesn't seem like the American way. Uh, freedom, freedom of choice is, is really what America is all about. So I, I totally get both points of view. But this is if this gets overturned, it's going to be a, a pivotal point here in the United States 
if it doesn't get overturned, it it won't be that big because it's it'll be just the same old the way it is, you know. But if it gets overturned, it will be a, a major, major thing here for the United States. And I expect a lot of protesting. There's already protesting going on. Like I said, if it doesn't get overturned, it, it won't be that big of a deal because it'll be status quo. It'll be the way it is now, right? It won't be a it won't be a change. So yeah, let me know your thoughts here on uh on on what you think. Yeah, and here's an interesting story for you guys. Democrats fear that Joe Manchin's bipartisan energy push is a stalling tactic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Joe Manchin, if you didn't see my video on Joe Manchin, uh, the scandal he's involved with, uh, you'll definitely have to check that out. I'll link it to that video here uh, in a moment. Uh, you definitely want to see that, how he's making millions of dollars. On, uh... <laughs> it's a very interesting story. But check this out. That That's not that story. But this story, Senator Joe Manchin's new focus on putting together an ambitious bipartisan energy and climate package. Now, note that this is a bipartisan, which means Republican and Democratic support, is being met with strong skepticism from fellow Democrats who view it as a stalling tactic to avoid discussing President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. <laughs> uh, Joe Manchin. He told reporters this week that his focus is on crafting a bipartisan energy legislation, which would center on proposals to incentivize green energy technologies and bolster the fossil fuel energy, uh, industry as well, which is interesting considering that story that was uh, leaked by the New York, or not leaked, but exposed by the New York Times, considering Joe Manchin's involvement with that coal mine that he owns where he's making millions of dollars. Instead of moving on Biden's um, Build Back Better package, which you know includes a lot of uh, energy in there as well, but the talks on the bipartisan energy bill are in early stages, and the chances of getting a deal on that are small, especially because the chances of Republicans voting on that before you know the big elections this year is, is probably very slim, probably very slim. A second uh, Republican senator briefed on it said, that is being considered and will severely limit Republican support for the bill. Yeah, like I just said, it's going to be hard to get consensus, consensus on that. Joe Manchin said, quote, my main thing is inflation, fighting inflation. He told reporters uh, in the week, waving away a question about whether he could support including the Affordable Care Act related health care subsidies in the uh, reconciliation package. Uh, another senator said, quote, we're running out of time. The calendar is staring us in the face, and I'm concerned we have no time to waste on conversations that are futile. Another senator said, I share that concern. The lawmaker added that Manchin appears to be entirely focused on bipartisan energy talks, which took place throughout the week. And when it's when you realize that Senator Joe Manchin is an a uh, part owner in a gob mine, uh, which is, you know, I explained that in, in that other video, which the New York Times has exposed where he's making millions of dollars on this. And uh, it, it kind of makes you realize what the story is there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and that's why this next election is going to be really important with the results here. And and what ends up happening here? So, for example, let, let's just you know come up with a now. Joe Manchin's not up for re-election for uh, I, th I think it's two more years, as is uh, Kirsten Cinemas, I believe that will be a very interesting election year. But for for the senators, but the thing is here, let's just now remember all the House of Representatives they all go come up for re-election, so. 
That could, could be controlled by the Democrats or the Republicans. Every two years, it's basically a free-for-all on who comes out the winner then. The Senate is basically, they all serve six-year terms. Remember, Mitch McConnell just won his, and he gets a, a full six years now. Um, but about one-third of the Senate comes up for re-election uh, every two years. Okay, so um, But what will be interesting here is um, who comes out of control here. Right now it's a 50-50 uh, Senate, Democrats, and Republicans. Okay, But a couple scenarios here. Let's say the Democrats win and they have 51 votes. Then Joe Manchin's not so important because they have one extra senator or 52 votes. Then Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, they don't really matter. Okay, They can pass things without them. Or if the Republicans win, they're not even in control anymore. Right? So kind of all these things are, <laughs> they all kind of make you realize what's at stake here, right? And then Mitch McConnell becomes the Senate majority leader again. Yeah. And when like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin come up, there's a lot of talk that Kirsten Cinema might not even win her primary. They may put another Democratic candidate in there to run against her and um, full-fledged put another Democratic candidate in there to beat her out in the primaries <laughs> against Kirsten Sinema. Now, I don't think that would happen against Joe Manchin. He's too big of a name. Remember, he used to be the governor for West Virginia. He's been a longtime senator, where Kirsten Sinema is a freshman senator, and she's very unpopular right now in, in Arizona. So they're talking about literally beating her out in the primaries if for the Democrat side, if that can happen. I'm just, you know, spitballing here. It's what I hear words on the street. It's still two years away. So uh, a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can happen. Uh, and, and remember, if, if the Republicans win, Mitch McConnell would go back to being uh, the leader in the Senate, most likely. I mean, they could elect a different leader, but... Uh, the Republicans were pretty happy with Mitch McConnell. He they they see him as uh, he ran a, with a, a strong leader with an iron fist, and uh, yeah, so a lot of lot of lot of lot of thoughts here. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything. And um, yeah, happy Mother's Day. I wish you guys all the best. Um, may God be with you, and uh, hope you had a fabulous weekend here. Um, yeah, if you can check out that previous video with um, my uh, my sons at the end of it, and I'll link you to the video here where my wife was in uh, just a few days ago. We had a little bit of a kind of a debate session talking about several different things here. So uh, make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's completely free to do so, uh, so you don't miss out on any new videos. You can click this video here to see my video from earlier in the day where my son is in there and we wish you Happy Mother's Day. And this video is my video from a day or so ago that my wife appears in and we have a little debate session in there. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.